Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Taiwan. This island territory is pretty controversial, and depending on who you ask, it might be a self-governed independent country or part of China. Despite this uncertainty, things seem to have been relatively calm in Taiwan in recent years, but tensions have hotted up more recently. So in this video, we're going to explain Taiwan, what's happening in the region, and more specifically, whether China and the US could go to war over it. Before we start though, there's about a week left on our big February Patreon push. So if you do want to help us out, then now's your time. That's because on top of all of the standard Patreon perks, like the ability to vote on video topics, early access to videos, and exclusive live events, everyone who signs up for a tier $10 or above this month gets an exclusive golden pin badge for free. These will never be for sale, and you have to sign up before the end of February. If you want to claim yours, then sign up now. There's a link in the description. Thanks for supporting independent journalism and TLDR News. This offer only lasts to the end of February, so you really don't have long left to sign up. Check out the link in the description to sign up and find out more. As with every video on the internet about Taiwan, we're going to start this one with a brief history of the area. So from 1927 until 1949, China was intermittently in a state of civil war. The war known as the Chinese Civil War was fought between the Chinese Communist Party and the Kuomintang government, or KMT. For most of this time, Taiwan was actually a Japanese territory, but it was ceded to Japan by China in 1895, when China was ruled by the Xing Dynasty. In 1945, after Japan's defeat in World War II, the territory was returned to China. In 1949, the CPC defeated the KMT in mainland China and established the People's Republic of China on the mainland. In response, the KMT fled to Taiwan, where they continued to run the Republic of China. Both the CCP and KMT claimed to be the rightful owners of all of China, despite the fact that the KMT only had effective jurisdiction over Taiwan. Today, the People's Republic of China, who we'll just call China from now on, still claims that Taiwan is Chinese territory. Despite this, Taiwan has never really been threatened by Chinese invasion, for two main reasons. Firstly, Taiwan is a mountainous island. Capturing Taiwan would entail a massive amphibious military exercise that, by some estimates, would require as many as a million soldiers. The second factor, though, is the US. Since 1979, the US's relationship with Taiwan has been defined by what we might describe as strategic ambiguity. Up until 1979, the US had a mutual defense treaty with Taiwan, and recognized the ROC in China as the sole legitimate government of China. However, after the People's Republic of China supported the US in Afghanistan and Vietnam, the US abrogated the treaty, cut off diplomatic relations with the ROC in Taiwan, and recognized the People's Republic of China in mainland China as the sole legitimate government of China. This doesn't mean that the US completely abandoned Taiwan, though. In late 1979, the US passed the Taiwan Relations Act, which basically said three important things. First, while the US didn't technically consider Taiwan an independent country, it considered it a separate jurisdiction with its own governing authorities. Secondly, while the US wouldn't officially have any diplomatic relations with China, it would have de facto diplomatic relations, and all previous agreements between Taiwan and the US would still hold. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, the act states that the United States will make available to Taiwan such defense articles and defense services in such quantity as may be necessary to enable Taiwan to maintain sufficient self-defense capabilities. This is a classic case of strategic ambiguity. It basically says that the US might defend Taiwan in a conflict with China. And this does two things. It puts China off from invading Taiwan, because they might be backed by the US. And secondly, it puts Taiwan off from unilaterally declaring independence and starting a war with China, because the US's support is not an ironclad guarantee. Now, this strategic ambiguity has worked for most of the last 40 years, but it's come under increased pressure recently. There are two obvious reasons for this. 
One, China's become an economic and military superpower. And US-China relations have been fraying, especially under former President Trump. Problems arose then in March of 2019, when China started regularly sending military planes into Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ. The ADIZ is essentially an airspace around a country which will be monitored for reasons of national security. Taiwan's ADIZ isn't recognized by any international treaty, but China has largely respected it since 1979 and even earlier. Taiwan's ADIZ is a bit confusing, because some of it covers China, and obviously Chinese military aircraft can fly in China. It's also been cut in half by the Taiwan Strait Meridian Line, which runs between Taiwan and China. So basically the rule has been that Chinese aircraft aren't allowed past the Meridian Line or into the southern part of Taiwan's ADIZ. So, as we said, in March 2019, Chinese military aircraft started regular incursions into Taiwan's airspace, usually the southwest corner, something which hasn't happened since 2000. Usually, it's only surveillance aircraft, but when the US does something that China doesn't like, they normally step up their presence. In August, US Health Secretary Alex Azar visited Taiwan, making him the most senior US official to make a visit since 1979. In response, China sent two fighter jets to the ADIZ. In September, after a visit by Keith Crack, a senior US official in the Trump administration, China sent 16 fighters, accompanied by bombers and spy planes, into the ADIZ. In January, Biden invited Taiwan's representative to his inauguration, something no previous president has done since 1979. In response, China sent four fighter jets and six bombers into the ADIZ, and the US, under Biden's leadership, put out a statement the following day, urging Beijing to step down, which was promptly ignored, and China sent an even larger group of 15 military aircraft, including 12 fighters, into the ADIZ the very next day. So where does this end? The US and China are currently in a dangerous feedback loop. The US helps Taiwan in some way, China threatens military action, the US has to reassure Taiwan by helping it in some way, and so on. Whether this will actually end up in a war depends on two questions really. Would the US actually intervene, and how serious is China about the war? On the first question, it's hard to know whether America would actually intervene, but there's two reasons they might. Firstly, a certain reading of the Taiwan Relations Act says that they're obliged to. And secondly, the vast majority of the US public have a negative view of China, so they might support military action against them. As to why they might not, well, there's an obvious reason. A war between two global superpowers means a lot of death and a lot of destruction. But what about the Chinese side of things? Are they actually serious? That is to say, when China flies military jets over Taiwan, is this a precursor to war or just an empty threat? Well, if you take what Xi Jinping said in a 2019 speech at face value, then the threat is real. China's state newspapers, like the Global Times, seem to be saying similar things. It published an editorial in January stressing that China really would go to war over Taiwan. Taiwan also seems to take the threat seriously. Last year, they increased their military budget by 10%, with most of that spent on asymmetric defense capabilities. However, as we mentioned earlier, invading Taiwan would be a massive endeavor. In fact, in World War II, the US planned to retake Taiwan from Japan, but realized that it would take 400,000 soldiers and decided against it. If Beijing doesn't want to commit to a massive and costly military exercise, then its incursions into Taiwanese airspace could just be an attempt to coerce Taiwan into reunification. The idea here would be that if China threatens Taiwan enough, Taiwan will eventually just accept reunification out of fear. The problem with this tactic, if it is a tactic, is that it doesn't seem to be working. The Taiwanese are increasingly anti-China and pro-US, with fewer and fewer Taiwanese people saying that they identify as Chinese. 3% say they identify as only Chinese, 34% as both Taiwanese and Chinese, and 59% as just Taiwanese. This is perhaps unsurprising. Taiwan and China have been effectively separated for a while now, and they've gone in quite different directions. 
Taiwan today has been a democracy since the 1990s and is pretty socially liberal, being the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. So if this is China's tactic, it seems unlikely to work. If anything, it seems to be making Taiwan less likely to agree to reunification. What do you think though? How will this disagreement end? Will Taiwan officially become part of China, either voluntarily or by force? And do you think that this will become a major military conflict? And if it does, would the US actually go to war over it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.